you're going to have to commit to a certain a certain amount of content if you're going to do this. Now, there are a lot of things I teach. I teach you how to blow up a YouTube channel in the most amazing way and generate a lot of business from YouTube. If you never want to do anything else, that's okay. I can show you how to build a social media presence and you never have to have a website. I can show you how to create a killer website without having to have social media, having to have video. But all together, they work incredibly well, this multi-channel approach to marketing, okay? Now, when you commit to content, let's just say you're gonna commit to content on your website. You have to decide what kind of content you're gonna create. Today, I'm gonna to show you a focus around communities. And I think this is something all of us can kind of get behind, although some of your cities and locations are gonna be much sm smaller and be a little bit different than they are for me here in Las Vegas, okay? So when you create content, and you're creating community pages, we're talking about, I'm gonna to go to my zip code page. We're talking about creating informational pages around a neighborhood or a zip code or a place to work or a popular attraction, homes near Disneyland, um, homes near the train, train station. And that's why I had it muted, because now the phone's ringing. And so we're creating these quality pages for people that give them information all about that area. This is the example I'm using, but let me tell you the strategy, okay? The strategy is, first, we, create, we have a great website. And if you don't have a real estate agent website, my team builds these. You've got to check out our brew websites. We're at ballandbrands.com. First, you got to have a good website because you need something to build on, right? If you're gonna if you're gonna go whip up a killer recipe in the kitchen, you want to have an, an oven that works properly. I was trying to bake. What was I making? Um, uh, at my grandmother's about a month ago. I was or, or a few weeks ago. I was trying to uh, make bacon in her oven. I believe it was, and it's a very, very, very old oven. And the bacon wilted and half of it cooked and half of it didn't cook. And we were all kind of laughing about this. And like, man, I make the best bacon ever. But if I put it in an oven that doesn't work, the bacon doesn't come out crispy, right? I mean, of course, all bacon's good bacon. Who's with me there? But anyway, could have been better. You want your recipes and your spices and your fresh, fresh fruits and condiments, whatever you're putting in things, right? Well, uh, creating content, you want your website to be the same way. This morning... I created a blog post, it's right here. Sabrina, maybe you can, I'm gonna put this into the chat bar for everybody. You guys gotta read this. So it's a blog post that I wrote um, this morning. I, 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 this video from Rand Fishkin, who's a really killer SEO guy, came out this morning and that inspired me to go back and create a blog I've been meaning to create for a while on Google's quality guidelines, how it scores a page how it believes a page is quality and therefore then how it ranks on the search engines. And this is a great, I, I, I digested it for you and then put it in a way that's even easier for you to understand for those that aren't um, maybe as technical or experienced in this in the, in the SEO area, okay? And a couple of things that stood out here to me, and this one right here is key. In order to get a good quality score on any content you create, Google wants to know that you're the expert. Well, that is one reason why, why we build all the content that we do is that we're constantly proving that we are the expert in that area. They wanna know that your website is an authority in that niche and that it's trusted on the web. Those things are absolutely key. Now go down to number two, right, as I dive into this piece of content here. And what it says is to receive the highest quality score, we wanna know that you applied at least one of the following to your content, time, effort, expertise, talent, or skill. And in my case, I wanna see all four of those. That's what we work on, okay? Jenna asked, what maps am I using? I'm not sure which one you were looking at. I think that was a screenshot of my IDX broker map. If, if I'm not sure which one you're, this, yeah, this is a screen capture of a map created by my IDX. Great question. All right, let me tell you the concept. Here's the concept. First, choose a topic. We're gonna, you're gonna work to rank for a particular topic. So here's what I did. Late last year, uh, fourth quarter, uh, my team says it was December. I'm really bad about time. So I decided that my 2018 topic goal, 
even though I'll build other topics, my main focus, no matter what, is going to be zip codes. Now, let me tell you why I chose that for those of you that don't know yet. You can use any keyword research tool you want to use. There's a bunch of them. I'm going to show you SEMrush really quick. All right. So let me go to Las Vegas in my dashboard. So I went to my city, Las Vegas, and I typed in Las Vegas. Then I went down here to this view full report. And I know I'm going fast. I have tons of this training on in, in my Rank Like a Boss course. Down here, I started looking at what keywords people were using when they looked up Las Vegas. And last year, I started building content for each one of these items, the best shows in Las Vegas, the weather in Las Vegas, the Cosmopolitan Hotel in Las Vegas. And I forget right here, Las Vegas zip code. All right. That means this number here, 60,500 searches a month for the keyword Las Vegas zip code. As a real estate agent, I'd be a fool knowing what I know with the experience I have to not target the keyword phrase Las Vegas zip codes. Now, I did a little study after that and I found that all large cities rank high for Las Vegas zip codes. And many of the smaller ones still rank for Las Vegas, for not for Las Vegas zip codes, for your city zip codes. Okay. This is just one example. But if you go look up your city, SEMrush, by the way, there is a free version of this, but they will make you pay at a certain point. Sabrina, if you could pop our SEMrush link out there for everybody to try that, put in your city and look. Okay. Now, here's something else you can do. You type in, um, let me, let me find not my own market. So if type in San Diego homes for sale, okay, you would type in yours. What happens is SEM rush gives you a list of keywords that are really popular for that particular area. So I'm scrolling down and look at, okay, I may not pick that one. The second highest one on their list is uh, or third one mobile homes for sale in San Diego. Now, Mobile homes in Vegas, we're not usually messing with. I don't know how that works somewhere else. So I'm probably not going to pick that one to rank for. Tiny homes for sale in San Diego, maybe if that's what I measure. And you play with this. Then you can put in a competitor's domain name. So let's just say I'm going to look at San Diego homes for sale. Let me see who's ranking for that. I'm going to scroll down and I'm just going to pick this one. I've used this one before. Okay. So that's a high ranking website. So let me just copy this domain name, throw it into my tool here and look at what keywords they actually rank for. I think I actually need to move that domain. Okay, I'm gonna put an only domain, domain name without the HTTP and stuff, okay? And I'm gonna go down to organic research. All right, and as I scroll down here, I can start looking and I can sort this by search volume, highest to lowest, what my competitor ranks for and where their traffic's coming from. I can sort it by what percent of traffic they actually get from that keyword. Well, I did this with my market and my number one competitor, I'm number two in my market for web search traffic. I'm number one for rankings, number two for traffic. And the only reason I'm number two for traffic is because the number one website figured out zip codes a lot longer ago than I did. Okay. So see this person here, houses for sale in San Diego's 11.66% of their traffic comes from that keyword phrase from their organic search traffic. Number two, number three. Well, look at this one guys. Okay. There's the bingo. I know you can't see it as fast as I can. I'm used to this. FHA approved condos, almost 7% of their search traffic comes from a number 12 ranking on Google for the keyword phrase FHA approved condos. If I'm in San Diego, I'm going to go, I want that keyword phrase. Does that make sense or have I, have I lost y'all? Are you still with me? You see why I would go after that? It has 22,200 searches a month. Now, if I don't want to service FHA approved condos, there's no value. I'm not going after it. Okay. That makes sense. That how I, I just wanted to kind of show you how I picked zip codes.
Okay, and then I also did the same thing at the same time for my marketing company, for my LoriBallon.com website. I chose real estate leads as my topic, okay? So I followed two different strategies and let, although they're the same concept, let me tell you how that, how that worked. The real estate leads one, I decided, I've already written a lot of content around the term real estate leads. A better way for me to get valuable content for my real estate agents that learn from me is to go out and interview a lot of other great agents that know things that I don't know. How to get real estate leads from door knocking, how to get real estate leads from nextdoor.com, how to get real estate leads from Instagram stories, how to get real estate leads from calling expireds, how to get real estate leads from hosting an open monthly open house, uh, monthly um, happy hour, how to get real estate leads from hosting open houses. Anyway, I don't know. I think I'm on I'm on interview number 15 now. And guess what? I'm at I'm on number 11 for real estate leads, which is the the top of page two. So I'm only one position away from landing on page one of Google, and it took me three months of doing these interviews. So what I do is I have I started a podcast, and on the podcast, which you can find on iTunes, um, the podcast I created an audio. Then I put it on YouTube. I uploaded the YouTube and audio into YouTube, and then I transcribed it. And then I went over to the Lori Ballen blog and I created a blog post for each one of the videos with the complete transcript. Those transcripts are like 3,000, 5,000 words long. I optimized it, made it, put in links and pictures or whatnot. And then every one of those pages, who knows the answer? What did I do on every one of those pages that moved up my real estate leads from like number 94 to almost page one of Google? And it'll it'll continue to climb. So anybody know what I did? The same thing. I did one thing on every one of those uh, real estate agent success series blog posts that moved up my main page that was built for a real estate lead. So I started with one page that I wanted to rank for real estate leads. Then I created a whole bunch of small ones. And what did I do? Okay, so yeah, there's keywords on there, but I'm not optimizing each one of those keywords. For real estate leads, I only optimize the main page, and it's it's not link it's not backlinks from another website. Although that's a great guess, Eric. Anybody know, Catherine? I know you know. Each one is unique content. Each one has its own video. It has its own description. I'll show you one of them so that you guys get an idea for this. They're actually all um, pretty much the same. Uh, format, which you are more than welcome to get ideas for how I design for the user experience. Okay. Um, those are my older ones. There we go. Here's one right here. Okay. So they all kind of look like this intro, table of contents, video, call to action button. Okay, and then down here, the related articles, and down here, there's a transcript. Does anybody know what one thing I did that's the exact same on every one of those? Yes, Nathan got it. Exactly, Nathan. I tied every one of these posts back to the parent page that I want to rank for real estate leads by including a link right here, lead generation for real estate agents. So on each page, I have text highlighted that has something to do with real estate leads, real estate lead generation, real, learn to get real estate leads. And every one of those points back up to a parent page that is all about generating real estate leads, okay? Now let me show you this exact same concept on, well, the same concept on zip codes, except I didn't use video, okay? So here it is. I wasn't even ranking for zip codes, and now I'm averaging number uh, number three, I think, for Las Vegas zip code map, and number five for Las Vegas zip code. And so, obviously, our tra our traffic's going through the roof. We're seeing um, a lot more engagement. I'm also discovering that I really need to push, make sure they're, they're, that I'm in the top three. That's a very uh, 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 term that's very important to climb a little bit higher, so I can take that number one spot for websites. So here's what I did. First thing, I built a page that I wanted to rank for the term Las Vegas zip codes. 
just like over here, I built a page that I wanted to rank for real estate leads. Got it? Built a page. So on this page, I created everything about Las Vegas zip codes. There's a map, there's a market report, there's IDX listings, there's information about each area and then each one of those zip codes. Okay, that's not enough on its own. Just creating one great page isn't enough on its own. What I need to do is I needed to prove to Google that I was the expert on Las Vegas zip codes, that my website is an authority on Las Vegas zip codes. So how did I do that? I had to build a whole bunch of content around Las Vegas zip codes and point back to this page, okay? And this is all done without backlinks. So what I did is I started in my area in Vegas, we have North, South, East, West, Northwest, Southwest. These are kind of the way we refer to our city of Las Vegas, okay? And then we have Henderson, which is also on the East side, but that's actually another city. And then North Las Vegas on the North side, but that's actually another city. So I just took Las Vegas and said, all right, let me break down East, Northwest, South, and Southwest. And I just started from there breaking down each little area. And then I thought to myself, if I were moving to Las Vegas and I wanted information about the zip codes, what's gonna be important to me? I might compare the living, the, the home values, and they are different in our area. So I, so I thought those were important. I'm gonna show them what properties look like. And then I'm gonna give them a link, and this page is actually still even building. Then I'm gonna give them a link to each one of those. So let's just say they take a look at the Southwest and they go, oh, okay, yeah, that's the Southwest. It's not next to the Strip. It's all right, that makes sense to me. Oh, okay, average price range. Oh, they're in the two to threes. Oh, I can afford that. That's what I want to look at. Then they can click through and start playing with these zip codes individually. Now watch what I did. So I, you click in to 89102. One, it points back up to Southwest Las Vegas zip codes, which points back up to zip codes. This is the hierarchy. One page is built under the next page. And when you put all of these posts in the same category or all of these pages under the same parent page, which is how the WordPress structure is built, you're either building blog posts in a category or you're building sub pages of a parent page. Well, when a category or a parent page ranks well, everything around it can benefit. When the sub pages rank well and push up to each parent page, it moves up those parent pages. So you're creating this flow of expertise where one page at ranks well is, is flowing that link equity to the next page. Does that make sense? We're almost done. You guys are doing great. Hang it in there. All right. So I created a zip code page for each individual zip code. On these zip code pages, I have the neighborhoods, homes for sale, school information, demographic information, and I don't put demographic information on here that breaks the fair housing laws. It's more like um, income and total number of residences, owner to rent ratios, those types of things. I'm not putting race or how many members are in the family. Uh, I've got the DMV and post office and I've got parks and recs, and I'm constantly playing with these. And what I do is I use heat maps and I'm able to measure where people click on the page, where they scroll on the page, what they like, what they don't like. And I get rid of unused, unvaluable content and continue to add more valuable content. Well, every time I do that, I publish the page again and it gets recirculated through my systems, republished out on social media and recrawled by Google. Well, if you select a page to be recrawled by Google, you can also select all the links on the page to also be recrawled. And all of this movement and activity and value continues to push up each page. And I did on both websites, I did in three months, I saw this I landing on page one of the search engines for those um, desired keywords. Uh, SEM Rush does an average. So if it says average number 11, sometimes you're on page one and sometimes you're on page two. And so it, it takes these averages based on what device people are using, what location they're in, all of that, okay? I see a question here. Where do you get all the information for the zip code? I use my MLS. So I click over here to my MLS. Uh, I'm expired now, so that's okay. I won't go through it. And I go into search and I do a search for each zip code. 
and I pull up um, the year that homes began building in that zip code. I just sort highest to lowest. I pull up the price ranges. I pull up the um, the builders, the you know, there because a lot in Vegas we have a lot of new, new constructions. There's popular builders in an area. I pull up whether or not it's horse zoned or anything else about that. So I use my MLS. I also use Google Maps. So if you go over here to to Google, just actually go straight to Google. Okay, type in whatever zip code it is that you want. Let's just say I'm doing eight nine one four five. Generally, a map will appear. Now here's what I do. I click on the map. And this is manual. I sit, I sit here and create the content. But if you look at this map and it's outlined, you may or may not have this in your area. I do, and so I use it. I, if you zoom in, as you zoom in, more and more things will start to appear. Well, look at this. Queens Ridge, that's a neighborhood. Fairway Point, that's a neighborhood. Tuscany Hills, that's a neighborhood. All of these are neighborhoods. So if I'm doing a little thing on Rock Springs Vista, the condo complex, I could say, just by looking at this, Rock Springs Vista is a condo is a condo complex built by so or we're in the zip code. I'm sorry, eight nine one four five is a zip code on the northwest side of town. It runs between Vegas and West Charleston. If you see this, I'm actually reading this. It runs between Vegas and Charleston Boulevard and between South Rampart and the 95 Freeway. You would know your area, however you call it, right? And then I could say uh, it is home to neighborhoods such as Queens Ridge, Tuscany Hills, Rock Springs Vista, right? Um, also in 89145 is the uh, shopping center, the Rainbow Plaza, and Bri the Brio Tuscany Grill. And it's just off of, just, just adjacent to the whatever golf course that is. And as you zoom in, It'll pull there. It'll pull up more and more businesses. So you can get a lot just from looking at the Google Map. Okay. Um, let me answer a couple questions here. Uh, yeah. So Sandy says some MLS some MLSs have what's called smart charts. This will tell you quite a bit about zip codes. It is amazing what our MLSs will do that we have no idea what they'll do. So I would first before you get overwhelmed go to your mls look at all of the buttons on there i mean oh my gosh when i log in it's ridiculous showing stats and this and that and, this. and i i only use a percentage of it if i actually take a day and time block this is how i found my, my one of the stats tools i use and i'll just time block two hours and say today is for investigating my mls and i'm going to go look at what every button does and see if there's anything i can use for my blogs okay um a great question, Brianna asked how I'm building these pages. I have, I I started building my own websites with a development team because I was frustrated with the with the uh, websites that were on the market. If they didn't do what I wanted them to do, there was always a stealing of achievements. So I started building my own WordPress websites. This is WordPress. Then once I got to a certain point, I brought in my own developers and opened my own marketing company. And now it's really cool. My development team and my marketing company builds on my needs for my own websites and then everybody else gets it in their website. So if I might, like this morning, I had a call with my developers and we were all talking about this real estate market report template that I want to have so that anybody can go in there and create a real estate market report any day of the week. And there's a lot of plug and play for you to create this original content. And so because I do this every day, every time I run into something, I go, hey guys, here's what we need, here's what we need, here's what we need. And so it's really cool. So if you need a real estate agent website, call my office and talk to Paul. I'm gonna type this in, we're at 702-917-0755 and you can find us at balandbrands.com brew. I think that link will work there. I didn't put in the HTTPS. Um, can you guess, make adjustments to can you guess make adjustments to an existing WordPress site? I I think you're I'm not sure what you're asking there. Um, if if my company can help you with your WordPress website, yes. Um, if you can make changes to your WordPress website, yes. <laughs> oh, can you guys? Can you guys? Yes, we can. Call Paul and tell him what you have, and we can talk about it. If you have a web WordPress website that is locked up, and what that means is a lot of these vendors will um, lease you, on my websites you own, they're yours. 
a lot of companies will lease you a website and then they lock up the ability to add plugins. Uh, even Boomtown, you, know, you have a WordPress platform, you got this killer ability to rank, but I can't get to the, um, I can't get to the blog portion. I can't get to a lot of the portions that I want that I know the website could do if it was unlocked, right? That's tricky. Um, and so you, I prefer, I am a teacher first, you guys, and I'm going to let you go in a second. I just want you to hear this from me. I'm a real estate agent. I do this every day. I'm a marketer by birth and by nature, which is a, a great advantage to have. And I'm a teacher trainer. So I care about you. I care about your success. I care about how you are able to build and you never have to have one of my websites or services to build. I want you to be able to own your own platforms. That's why I created them. I want you to have no ceilings of achievement. That's why I created this. And I built them, build them all on my own need. But I will teach you how to use whatever website you're using to the best of its ability. The concepts don't change, guys. Create quality, create value, be the expert. Make sure your website's the authority in your market. Make sure it's trusted. Have an SSL certificate. Make sure that you've got good quality links coming into your website get reviews testimonials ratings they matter they matter they matter they matter google listens to brand inflection and understands those links as well and sometimes even without links and they're really important so you want to make sure that you are really focused on value and you can do this on any website platform you just might run into some of the you may not have all the cool gadgets that i have and you may have to get a little bit more creative okay um Doug says, notice you have a drop down box for more search criteria. This is part of the brew. That is custom. That is part of the brew. So I cannot teach you how to add that to another website, I'm afraid. Um, GoDaddy websites, same thing. They're, you're going you're gonna to run into some speed issues. You're going to run into some challenges, but they're, sometimes they're a great starting point. So you got to start where you are sometimes and where your budget fits as well. All right, guys. So it's 11.33. I need to let you go, although I would love to talk to you all day. Uh, check out ranklikeaboss.com. That's my training course on how to do all of this. It's video focused and uh, Sabrina's in there now adding all of our checklists also to all of our videos. And um, it's a learning forum that constantly grows as we all grow. And websites, pay-per-click services, content, uh, call us at balandbrands.com. I put that phone number in there. And I hope to work with you guys all in the future. If you have any real estate agent referrals, in Las Vegas, Henderson or North Las Vegas, Lori Ballin team would love your referrals. I appreciate you guys all so much for being here and I will talk to you on the next one.